welcome to the Lose Weight, Live Life podcast. If you're someone who would do anything to lose weight, yet finds it impossible to stick to a diet, to eat less, or just what you think you should, this podcast is for you. I am your host, certified life and weight mindset coach, Claire McKenzie. Listen in to learn how to stop overeating, lose weight for the last time, and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, all without diet deprivation and self-sabotage. Number 120, Paradoxes on Weight Loss Journeys. I've been thinking lots about what I want to share with you on this episode, the first after our spring break. So for those of you who don't know, after two and a half years of mostly consistent weekly podcast episodes, I decided to take a break back in March because I felt more like I was surviving than thriving. I was getting a recurring illness and was struggling with my asthma which didn't even improve after a week in the sun in February. So I decided to step back from the podcast for a little while and highlight my favourite episodes whilst also creating a little more time for my own self-care. Unfortunately, during that time, I did get to the bottom of what was making me ill and it was just an unusual strain of bacterial chest infection that once I had a specific antibiotic for it, I'm finally relieved to share Also, during that spring break time, I recorded a couple of podcast interviews, which I look forward to sharing with you over the next couple of weeks. But one more thing before we get started today, if you've enjoyed listening to the Lose Weight Live Life podcast, and if you found it helpful and useful as you consider changing your relationship with food, then I would love it if you could help other women find this podcast by rating it, reviewing it, and or sharing it. So from now until the 5th of June, we're running a competition where everyone who rates, reviews and shares the podcast will get entered into a prize draw to win 12 months membership of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. You get one entry for rating, one for reviewing and three entries for sharing on social media to your friends or appropriate groups that you belong to where you also think others would benefit. To find out more about how to do this, go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash podcast 2023. There you will find all the details about exactly how to rate, review and share the podcast and how to enter the competition. Okay, so back to what we want to talk about and share with you today. And the question I ask myself is what I want you to hear, what do I want you to hear that could make a difference for you, whether you're getting started on your weight loss journey, continuing your weight loss journey, or what can you do to make your weight loss journey easier? And what I realised is that most of what I want you to know about weight loss, things that I would consider weight loss true, also arguably have an opposite truth. And so that's what I decided to explore here with you today. The paradoxes, and by the way, I had to check what I wanted to share are paradoxes because my English isn't that great, but I believe they are because the definition of a paradox is a situation or statement that seems impossible or is difficult to understand because it contains two opposite facts or characteristics. And this happens so much in a weight loss journey. But if anyone's listening to this and I've got this wrong, then please forgive me. But anyway, let's get on and let's share what I want to share with you. So I want to consider and discuss the following. 10 points that I think are weight loss paradoxes. The first one is that it's not your fault that you are overweight. And at the same time, you are the only one that is responsible for how you eat and the weight that you are. Now, when I say this to women I'm working with, when I say it's not their fault that they're overweight, they mostly don't believe me. They kind of want to get some relief from the constant conscious and unconscious berating and beating they've maybe been giving themselves for years or decades because they haven't been eating better or haven't figured out permanent weight loss yet. And yet logic tells them that they're the ones who've been putting food in their mouth, that have been making their food choices, that led them to gain weight whilst they knew, in most cases, which foods were contributing to their weight gain and which ones weren't. So they sort of feel, so how can it not be my fault? And what I remind them is of how the food manufacturing industry has manipulated food ingredients to create over-desire and how the diet industry was wrong when they told us to eat low-fat foods that had added sugar to make them taste better, and how the advertising industry has been responsible for creating unconscious connection between food and drink consumption and positive emotion and being a better person. As I say that, what I'm reminded of is the advertising for Mars bars, 
which I think the slogan was something like a mile a day helps you work, rest and play. And I can, as I say that now, and I probably haven't heard that for decades, I can still hear the tone, the, the how it sounded in sort of the singing voice. And when I'm talking to women in this way, they want to believe me. But what they also then remember is maybe their sister or childhood friend or someone else who had the same influences as them doesn't overeat or maybe they are slim so they then go back to thinking it must be their fault and judging and shaming themselves for it but the thing is everybody's body is different everyone's family upbringing is different even siblings of the same family could have had very different experiences with regards to their relationship with food and other people did you have a brother for example who always seemed to get bigger servings than you or who was always given the priority for the leftovers Or did you have a sister that seemingly ate more than you, but was somehow always the slim one? I want you to consider for a moment that it really isn't your fault that you are a different weight to the weight that you want to be. And I want you to know that so that you can stop judging and shaming yourself and free up all of that negative energy to help you move forward from a place of self-love, acceptance, compassion, and appreciation. And at the same time, it's really important that you also know you're the only one that can solve this. You are the only one that can figure out how to create the relationship with food that works for you. Because the relationship with food that will work for you is unique to you. And so the question becomes, how can you take 100% responsibility for your future relationship with food, weight and health? What would that look like? And importantly, how can you take that responsibility without judging yourself for what you may have considered you did wrong or didn't do right previously and for what you will continue to get wrong and not do right because I promise you it will continue but that is a part of the journey okay so how can you take 100 responsibility for your relationship with food your future weight and health without any judgment without making yourself wrong for anything that you have done previously that didn't help you support those goals and that you will continue to do going forward that won't help you to support those goals. Okay, so that's the paradox of that situation. Okay, on to the second one then. Losing weight is incredibly difficult and at the same time, incredibly easy. So weight loss is the easiest thing in the world if you consider that all you have to do is not do something, which is not put certain foods or so much food in your mouth. You have to simply eat differently or eat less. The art of losing weight could be considered the art of not doing something, not overeating. And yet at the same time, for most of us, it will feel incredibly difficult some of the time or lots of the time when we're working at losing weight. And I've talked lots on the podcast in previous episodes about why it's so hard to consistently eat differently to lose and manage your weight for life. I've talked about how processed and refined foods that we eat create more dopamine to be released in our brain and that our biological response is that they must be good. And so therefore we should eat more of them. That's what our brain thinks. I've also talked about how foods high in refined carbs and added sugar can lead to hormonal imbalance, which makes us more hungry and makes it difficult for our bodies to use our onboard fat reserves as an energy source. I've also talked about how our social conditioning may have led us to believe that it's normal to eat three meals and have three snacks a day, or eat a three course meal when we're celebrating, or to treat ourselves with food and drink. And of course, there's lots more. So there's lots of reasons why it can feel incredibly difficult to lose weight. And yet, as I said, it can also feel incredibly easy. It feels easy when you notice that changing the foods you eat give you more energy, help you to feel better, help you to feel less hungry, help to relieve aching joints, help you to sleep better, improve your skin, and of course, enable you to lose weight. And most of the ladies that I work with will experience their weight loss journey being both incredibly easy at times and incredibly difficult. And so I think it's really important to be prepared for both and to help yourself with both phases. When things feel hard or difficult, remind yourself, I can do hard things and allow yourself to believe that it can be easy and ask yourself, how can I make this easier? Okay, number three. The more you love yourself at the weight that you are, the easier it will be to lose your weight. Listen to podcast number 117, You Can't Help Hate Yourself Slim, to dive deep into this paradox. In the meantime, if you're a woman in midlife, chances are you've been conditioned to believe 
that you are in better in some way if you are slim or a healthy weight or have a toned body or eat a certain diet. And even if you logically know that's not true, sometimes those beliefs are so deep in our subconscious, we feel the effect of them, even if we think we don't believe them. The problem is that hating ourselves, judging ourselves, thinking we should be different makes it difficult to take care of ourselves. And willing or disciplining ourselves, being against ourselves in order to induce change isn't sustainable in the long term. It's so much easier to do things which will sometimes feel difficult and sometimes feel easy, as I previously mentioned, when you're doing those things for someone you love and care about unconditionally. So even if you're resistant to love and accept yourself as you are, because maybe you think if you accept yourself as you are, you won't change, I promise you it doesn't work that way and that it is worth the effort to change how you feel about yourself before or during your weight loss journey. Okay, next, number four, is the paradox of deciding to eat foods and meals that you find delicious whilst also being aligned with helping you lose weight, whilst at the same time wanting to not use food as a primary source of pleasure in your life. Okay, so let me just say that again. It's the paradox of deciding that you can eat foods and meals you find delicious that will also support your weight loss effort. So we might want to say in inverted bracket commas that they are healthy. Okay, so that's really useful. It can be really helpful. But at the same time, you want to be aware that you are not using food as a primary source of pleasure in your life. Okay, so this one came up in the academy this week. We had some conversation about not enjoying lunches, being envious of lunches, and what we could do to make lunches more delicious and appealing so that we don't feel deprived. Now, firstly, I think it's important to notice and create truth for you that you can absolutely love the foods you eat whilst you lose your weight and manage your weight for life. It's a part of the fundamental principle that you must enjoy your weight loss journey, empower yourself to believe that you are the best person to decide how you want to eat, and that you must lose your weight only eating in a way that you are prepared to do for life whilst at the same time being open to seeing that what that looks like for you is likely to change over time. So there's another paradox within a paradox right there. But I really believe it's really important to enjoy the foods and meals you eat whilst you're losing weight. And at the same time, I urge you to stay conscious to feeling as though you need to get pleasure from your foods, because if you don't, your day will feel miserable or you will feel depleted or deprived in some way. We need to ensure the pleasure we get from food is in balance with pleasure that we get from other things in our life. We need to ensure that whilst we love eating meals that we love, we're also okay with having some meals or days where food is just about the fuel and nourishment it gives us and not feel incredibly down about our day when that's the case. I say this because I spent years believing, without being aware of it and knowing it at the time, that dinner was the highlight of my day. And how sad is that? And it wasn't that there was anything wrong with my life. I had a great life, but I'd fallen into the habit of believing that life was hard and difficult and relentless. And the way through this was learning to think differently about my days and to appreciate the things that I had forgotten mattered. So by all means, and in fact, I highly recommended taking care of yourself by making your meals delicious. But be wary of relying on food to make you happy in your life. Okay, number five is another one that is the source of discussion in the academy from time to time. So it is considering that you can choose to not have foods that you over desire in the house to make it easier for you to not eat them and lose weight. And yet at the same time, the only way to really desensitize your desire for those foods is to not be overeating them when you have them around. Okay, so it's like, well, in order to manage my emotions and how I feel, and how my brain responds to these foods, I need to be around these foods so that I can do this work. But at the same time, not having these foods in the house makes it easier to create the weight loss results that I want. So for me, this one is all about timing. I suggest you don't try and do everything all at once. So if you're just getting started on your weight loss journey and you're working on making some changes, you might choose to not have your favorite treat foods. And I say treats in inverted commas in your house because it helps you to not have to manage your mind and feelings around them when you're feeling the desire to eat them. And yet at the same time, recognize you're choosing to not have them around to make things easier for you and to know that you get to decide what you want to do when you have the bandwidth within your weight loss journey 
to create a new relationship with these foods, a relationship where you decide what that looks like for you and to be around them and eat them in the way that you want to. So I never recommend an all or nothing approach, but it might be that for a period of time, you find it easier to not have these foods constantly around you. And continuing on the theme of treating yourself, and again, in inverted commas, it's addressing the very normal thing of eating and drinking something at a certain time of day or a point in your week is your go-to way to relax, treat, or reward yourself. And again, so many of us this of us have done this our whole lives. Our parents may have rewarded us or comforted us with food, and everyone does it, and we do it without realizing it. The problem, of course, is that if you're wanting to lose weight or be more healthy, the very foods and drinks that you perceive as treats are likely stopping you achieve what you truly want or making it more difficult for you to achieve what you truly want. So there's another paradox right there. The next one, number seven, it may be an unconscious belief that you enjoy life more or that life is easier when you're not working at losing weight. This is likely believed because of previous experiences of dieting that had rules that felt depriving and impossible to adhere to. But whilst you think you enjoy life more when you're not working at eating more healthily, the chances are you're suffering with your physical and emotional well-being. You're miserable because you're unhappy with how you feel physically or emotionally, and yet you still believe you're happier than when you're working at losing weight. And I think this happens for two reasons. The first is the fact that there is a lag between the efforts we put in to losing weight and seeing the results, so that sometimes we think our efforts are not being rewarded or making an impact. And the other reason is that we can be incredibly unhappy or unhealthy, but because it's the status quo, it feels so much easier than making change. We're wired to resist change. We're wired to believe that change will be worse than staying the same, but it couldn't be further from the truth. It's important to know that being resistant to change is intrinsic to being human. After all, we are animals. No matter how uncomfortable we are in our current existence of our life, if we live with that discomfort for some time, making changes, even if it, those changes are to lessen that discomfort, will feel uncomfortable. Okay, number eight, eating to avoid negative feelings and emotions creates more unwanted negative feelings and emotions than the ones you were avoiding in the first place. So the only reason we ever eat the way that we eat is we believe we will feel better if we eat the foods we're wanting to eat So, at some level. So it could be feeling better because we're taking care of physical hunger. So we eat because we don't want to feel physical hunger. We're feeling better. It could be that we feel better because we are in a vertical as treating ourselves. It could be feeling better because we're punishing ourselves. Sometimes we punish ourselves with food as well. We get relief when we do that because we feel we're deserving of that punishment. And yet for many of us, the foods we subconsciously believe are helping us to feel better are creating the net negative of leading us to feel worse, whether that's because we feel shame after eating them or because the accumulative effect of them has a detrimental effect on our physical or mental well-being. Number nine, repeatedly eating differently to how you intended, repeatedly failing, can be exactly what leads you to, i use a term, winning in inverted commas, when it comes to creating a relationship with food that you love, when it comes to creating the weight loss outcomes and results that you want. And this is another principle that is the direct opposite of how we've all tried to lose weight through dieting for decades. In order to lose weight and manage your weight for life, you have to address the underlying reasons, there'll be lots of them, why you've been eating in the way that led you to be heavier or less healthy than you want to be. And rather than taking the approach of using discipline and willpower to change how you eat, failing your way forward is what gives you the opportunity to understand your unconscious belief systems and unintentional habits around food. It's repeatedly making mistakes and eating differently to how you planned or intended that helps you bring those subconscious beliefs and unintentional habits into your conscious mind. And when you do that, when you become aware of why you eat the way that you do, aware of why you desire food the way that you do, then you can start to change your default thoughts, feelings and actions around food. Okay, the last one then, number 10. And I think this is probably the biggest one and it's another game changer one. And I want you to consider you can eat whatever you want and be the weight that you want to be. And at the same time, 
for most of us, eating what we want is what led us to be overweight or heavier than we want to be in the first place. Okay, but I'm going to say that again. You can eat whatever you want and be the weight that you want to be. And at the same time, for most of us, eating what we want is what led us to being heavier than we wanted in the first place. Most of us have spent our lives trying to lose weight, telling ourselves we cannot have what we want. And that is never going to work. We're always going to be in conflict when we are in that position, when we're in that place. Instead, we have to figure out what we truly want. We have to evolve and change what we want. We have to help our brain see that if we want to lose weight and be healthy, then we actually don't want the foods that keep us heavy and unhealthy. And this isn't easy and it takes time. And as I said, it's a total game changer and worth the work. Now, if it feels impossible for you right now, the idea of genuinely not wanting the foods and drinks you desire, then maybe you meet yourself where you are and notice that you want to not want those foods and drinks, but you've not figured out yet what that looks like for you. Okay? And what that might look like helping you move forward with this is finding as much evidence as possible as to why you don't want what you've spent years wanting. Ask yourself how someone who genuinely doesn't want the foods, high in sugar, refined carbs, alcohol or salt thinks about them and start to play with the possibility that you could find some truth in that way of thinking too. Start with entertaining the possibility of this is a great place to be in. And changing how you think about certain foods is something that can take place gradually over time or it can happen in an instant. Okay. So those are the 10 things I wanted to share with you today. And again, just a couple of things before I go. If again, if you've enjoyed listening to this episode or other episodes of the podcast, and if you found them helpful and useful, then I would love you to consider rating, reviewing, and sharing the podcast. Uh, and as a reminder, from now until the 5th of June, we're running a competition where you get to enter into a prize draw to win 12 months of membership of the Lose Weight Live Life Academy. To find out more about how to do this, go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash podcast 2023. There you'll find all of the details and how to rate, review and share the podcast and how to enter the competition. And if you're interested in joining the Lose Weight Live Life Academy or finding out more about the Lose Weight Live Life Academy, go to www.thebestyou.coach forward slash enroll and get on the waiting list for when we are opening in June. Okay. Thanks so much, everyone. Take care and have a great week. If you enjoyed listening to this podcast and are ready to live a more intentional life, lose weight as a part of that journey and create a relationship with food and yourself that you love, then I would be honored to have you join the Lose Weight Live Life Academy membership and coach with me. The program offers different levels of support to suit you, including self-paced learning, twice weekly calls, private coaching, an amazingly caring community and lots more. Find out all the details about when and how you can join at www.thebestyou.coach forward slash coaching.